Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to test this hill start assist. Now the way this works is I'm on a slight incline right now on my driveway because it has, it's like a little bit of a hill you might say. And um, the way you use hill start assist is you pull the brake lever in and the second time you pull it in twice and the second time you pull on it really hard and you'll see the hill start assist light come on. Okay, I'm going to stop now. I'm going to put on the brake and I'm going to put on a second time. Now the hill start assist light is on. It's white, not yellow. And if I take my hand off the brake, I'll put both my hands up, you'll see the bike won't roll backward. And I've got five seconds to roll on the throttle before the bike starts rolling. So that's how hill start assist works. It's a great feature of the new Goldwing, something that you need to familiarize yourself with, and it works uphill or downhill. Now some of you have uh, talked about you've had a hard time closing the trunk. The trunk is a little, mine anyway, is a little tight, a little hard to close. You know, if you just slam it like you normally think, it doesn't even latch. As you can see, it's still open. So you can even give it a pretty good shove. Now that, now it's down, but you'll notice the trunk light is still on. It's still not fully latched. If you look on the dash, you can see the trunk open light is still flashing. So. Here's how I close the trunk. I don't like slamming the trunk. I just don't think it's good for the plastic. So what I do is I, right here where this Honda emblem is, I pull back with this uh, passenger backrest and I push down and I kind of grab under here and I just kind of grip it down like this and latch it. And you can hear it latch when it closes. And now the trunk light is off on the dash and the trunk is closed. Now the saddlebags <clears throat> are a little different. I've never had to really slam mine, what, and I don't like to slam. Again, I don't like to slam plastic parts shut. So what I do is I, I come up here till I hear it click, and I just push it in with my hand like that, and that will close it and turns the light off on the dash. Well, if you're at a stoplight, you shouldn't do this while you're riding, but if you're stopped at a stoplight or an intersection, just reach around behind you, you know, be careful, make sure both your feet are on the ground and just give it a good hard shove and it will click into place. And again, if you're riding the bike and you see the saddlebag light flashing that one of your saddlebags is not completely latched, you can just at an intersection just reach back and just kind of pull it like that or maybe tap it with your, uh, the bottom of your fist and that will be enough to close it and get it to latch. If that's not enough to get it to latch, you may have a problem with the mechanism that needs uh, to be repaired or to, needs to be adjusted otherwise. Okay, now you've seen some of my other videos. You may have seen how frustrated I was when I first got the bike. I couldn't get this lid to open up. I kept mashing on this button right here and this little cubby wouldn't open. I thought it was locked. I didn't know what the problem was. Well, there's a little trick. You have to push on the right side of the button. When you push on the right side, it releases because that is where the little catch mechanism is for the cubby. Now, here's a little tip. If you want to clean your windshield or anytime you need to remove the windshield, you need it in the up position. You don't have to leave the bike turned on. If I move this all the way to the top, this is the highest position right now. Uh, if I turn the bike off, the uh, the windshield will go back down to the lowest position while the bike is turned off. But if you want to maintain that, just raise it to the highest position, hold this switch all the way up, and then turn the bike off, and the windshield will remain in the highest position. That lets you clean it, clean behind it, clean the, the garnish behind it or the meter, uh, the meter panel behind it. Just a little trick you might not know about. One of the first complaints I heard from new owners of the 2018 are these passenger grab rails. And there's no, you know, real easy way or good way to use them as a tie down point because there's no opening in here for a hook to go in and they, they certainly don't stick up and they don't have an opening for you to use. But there is a way to use these as a tie down point using bungee cords or some other type of tie down system and I'm going to show you how to do that. On these grab rails you'll notice a little notch at the front and at the back. 
and you can wrap that bungee cord underneath that grab rail not sure if you can see it there and then it will come up over the top and then you can tie them together up here as I've done. As you can see there is a way to use bungee cords with these grab rails. Here I've got two of these green Fordham uh, bungee cords. These are the next to the longest I think. There's another one that's even longer. So if I had something tall I need to put on here I'd use the longer bungee cords. Now, now when you're driving with the cruise control on uh, you can obviously turn the cruise off by tapping your front or rear brake which is what I always used to do. Of course you could hit the cruise control switch to turn it off but you can also hit the upshift or the downshift paddle and that will also cancel the cruise control. Here's a little shortcut you may not know. If you're used to using the knob to turn the bike on before you start the bike, I'm going to turn the bike off and show you a little shortcut. You can just hold down the start button. That will turn the bike on and then when you hit it again, it will start the bike. It may not be real obvious, but there is a way that you can check your gas mileage and no matter what screen you're looking at, whether it's the navigation screen or in this case the radio, if you press the info button, you'll see a fuel consumption average for trip A in this case. <clears throat> now, it's not showing anything because we're not moving. If we were in motion, it would show you what that average uh, fuel consumption is, miles per gallon. Now, the way the Goldwing calculates this is whenever you reset the trip meter, when you say you get gas and you reset your trip meter, it will start calculating the average mileage from that point forward. And then of course if you hit info again, it will take you to trip B. So let's say you're taking a three day trip. You might want to reset your trip meter. Uh, trip A, trip meter A might be for the entire trip, trip meter, uh, trip B might be your, you know, for every gas tank, every fill up. It's just up to you how you want to do it, or it could be for every day. And it will track your mileage that way. And then if you click it info again, it will show you the average mileage or the miles per gallon you're getting as you're riding. It will actually show you what you're consuming in fuel. And then the, if you hit info again, it will show you the elapsed time from when you started the bike. So if you've been riding 30 minutes, 45 minutes, it will show you how much time uh, elapsed time since the last time you started the bike. And if you hit info again, it sends that little information bar away so you don't have to be bothered with it. Now if you're in the navigation screen and if you hit the info button, the first thing you'll see is your radio station that you're currently on. Right now I'm on preset 1 FM 105.3 and then as you hit the info button it will go through trip A, trip B, uh, mileage, <clears throat> and then elapsed time and then back off again. Okay, now sometimes you want to be able to mute the sound and there is an easy way to mute the sound on the Goldwing. I've got the speakers on right now but it works with the headsets too. I just want to demonstrate how it works. Basically you use the source button and you just hold it in. You don't, don't tap it, hold it down and that will mute. And you'll notice on your dash you'll see the little speaker with a line through it showing that the sound is muted. Now to take it off of mute, you hold it down again, hold it for a couple of seconds till you hear it beep. If you just click it one time, it's going to change your source. Even if you're muted, it will change your, your audio source. So hold it down, then let go, and you're right back where you were before.